My name is Edmund, and this is where I grew up. Most people know me by that, and my street name was Crazy Ed. This is 78th and Stanford, in between Avalon and Central, which we call growing up was Eastside Swans back in the day. Then it became Mad Swan Blood. So we in Swans, S Gang, whatever you want to call it, you know. This is where I actually grew up at. My father moved here back in the back, that last duplex when I was two years old. That was about 69, 69 we moved over here. It wasn't until maybe nine and 10 years old that I really, well, me and my friends really started getting deeper into the mind state of being gang bangers. I knew, you know, some of the, the, the players, you know, that was around here. For instance, Raymond Washington uh, lived right here, right across the street on 78th Street. So do you remember when um, Raymond Washington got killed in 1979? I know you probably was still a youngster. I heard about it, yeah. And because of who he was, we all heard about it. You know, it was, it was a big thing, you know, and it was one of them things that you know, coming from where I came from, it was celebrated, you know. Uh, we looked at it as, you know, because of him and other people, they brought hell to a lot of my people, you know. So, you know, it was it was just one of those things, you know. Our mission and our, our endeavor was to, to, to get as many of them before they got us, because we was outnumbered for the most part, you know, and from all four corners, we was hunted. Northwest of us, we had the 690s coast. Then we had, straight to the west of us, we had the 74 Hoovers. Uh, to the south of us, we had the, the, the 970 East Coast. To the east of us, we had the 760 East Coast, the Kitchens, the 890 East Coast. Uh, Northeast of us, we had the uh, the far 90s coast. So we were surrounded, you know, and it was very few of us. When we went out to do our dirt, we went by ourselves. We didn't go out, no, we didn't have that many dudes like that. And we didn't know then that, that we was practicing something called the art of war. We made people think we was bigger than what we was and badder than what we was because we were spread out. And people thought it was probably two or three people or five. It was probably one person going to each hood and we met back up in the middle. Those of us who could make it back. And that's how we, that's how our reputation got out there. And we was considered one of the baddest blood gangs on the east side. People would say, well, why would you become a gang member? It wasn't that my father didn't do what was necessary my father just didn't understand gang banging. Like uh, many parents back in that generation, they didn't understand what gang banging and gang violence entailed until they started seeing their children die. He gave me the necessities to, to learn and grow and be a man and stay away from that. But something in me had to experience it. This is where I lived from the age of two years old till maybe about 15. Every time I stepped out this door, man, it was war. I can remember one day, I was, me and one of my homies, Moon, and another one of my, my homies, we was over by Fremont. Some cats come on Avalon and 79 right there and say, what's up, blood? So we walk into the car, and all of a sudden they said, Kitchen Crip, cuz, and pulled out guns. Had they allowed us to come to the car, they could have killed all three of us. But in any case, we decided, hey, we're getting ready to, to shut it down. So I made my way here. Soon as I got right here, a car pulled right there. 
All they had to do was point straight, but they shot over here. They shot these windows out right here with a shotgun. You know, that, that was just one incident. There, there were several times, man, where I could have died right in front of my own house, you know. I was willing to die for this hood. So in doing this, I'm willing to give my life to bring about some type of solutions to what we created here. Because in the early 80s, we brought in the guns in a real way. We had the propensity, man, to, to, to shoot whoever decided to be an enemy of ours. And we decided that the police was some of those people. And, you know, one day we got stopped and we decided we wasn't going to prison. That we would see him dead first and go home and go to sleep. And they gave me 26 years, you know, as a, as a, 16 year old kid. Well, coming, walking up here, it was kind of like uh, nostalgia. It was, it, I had kind of like bilateral feelings. I felt good about it because I haven't made this walk in a long time, even though I passed by here almost every day and I, I throw a kiss to my father because this is the last place that I saw him alive. I found him on the bed, and he was trying to get out the bed, and he had he had had a massive heart attack. So that's the last time I was here. My um, objective is to primarily, first of all, keep the people in my community alive, and my second one is to keep them out of jail. If I can get them to work or do something else productive, then I'm winning all the way around. I shot him five times, he's paralyzed, and since then he's right now incarcerated for a drive-by shooting he's done around the corner from where I shot him in Park Hill on a crib.